Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. I titled this video uh, World War III, uh, partly as an attention grabber. I think there are events going on around the world uh, that uh, probably need uh, more attention than some of the uh, uh, news uh, that is that is currently getting the attention of uh, especially the United States. So while the uh, the current US uh, administration, the uh, the Biden administration uh, is uh, focusing on climate change, global warming, or is it cooling, warming, I, I don't know at this point, and uh, getting uh, the required uh, amount of cross-dressing admirals uh, into the United States military. I, I wasn't aware that it was a, a military imperative to have a certain amount of cross-dressing admirals to, uh, to uh, help your, uh, your military uh, become better. So I guess uh, right now that is a, a goal that uh, really is something that uh, the current administration needs to focus on, and that is, again, getting the needed amount of cross-dressing admirals with some fairly serious underlying psychiatric conditions to lead the armed forces of the United States. But anyway, I'm going to get off of that real quick. That's, that's another lesson in insanity that I'll talk about later. But uh, back in the springtime, there was a very significant buildup of uh, Russian forces on the border of the Ukraine, and uh, uh, during the uh, the course of that buildup, it is estimated that uh, there were uh, in the neighborhood of uh, anywhere from a hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand uh, Russian forces that had amassed on the border of of the Ukraine, and uh, this involved a number of Russian army groups that were transferred from around the Russian Federation to the border of the Ukraine. And uh, at a certain point, the, uh, the, the Russians withdrew forces, but at the same time, it also left a significant amount of equipment and manpower along the border of the Ukraine. And now, um, uh, as we enter November 2021, we are seeing a new buildup of Russian forces, a more uh, Maskarova uh, type of buildup of Russian forces that are uh, massing near the Ukraine. And uh, this is being done much more secretively, and it involves uh, such units as uh, well, you can see on my map of Russian force disposition. Um, you can see here the uh, I'm sorry, that's the second army. It was uh, this army group over here that is actually in the process of moving towards the Ukrainian border. So uh, way over here near uh, the 41st army uh, that uh, serves uh, in between uh, Mongolia and Kazakhstan, uh, many of these units um, are being deployed again uh, west towards the border of the Ukraine. Uh, so for instance, a uh, very significant unit right here, the 119th Missile Brigade. This unit uh, has uh, the Iskander uh, ballistic and cruise missile uh, complex uh, in its unit, and uh, that unit has uh, has uh, stayed in the uh, western area of the uh, Russian Federation. But some some of the biggest units uh, in uh, the Russian Armed Forces, for instance, the 90th tank division located here, and a fairly unique uh, division as it has three tank regiments and uh, one mechanized regiment, and then obviously its self-propelled artillery regiment and its reconnaissance battalion. Uh, it is believed that unit has been moved west as well, uh, along with uh, other units such as um, uh, the 35th Mechanized Brigade, you have Special Forces Brigades here as well, such as the 24th Special Forces Brigade. Now, this unit is not attached to the 41st Army, 
this is a, a unit that reports to the uh, general staff and the, uh, the GRU, the Russian intelligence, military intelligence. And then obviously the uh, uh, 74th Mechanized Brigade and the 120th Artillery Brigade. But a lot of these units are now uh, back and, and or moving towards uh, the western Ukraine. Is uh, could we see uh, something happen uh, uh, possibly in the near future, like we did in 2014? Again, very hard to say. But again, uh, some of this news is just not making it to uh, the mainstream networks. It's just not being talked about, and it's important to keep your eye on these things. As when world wars do occur, sometimes we just don't see them coming, and it really affects everybody. Um, I would say, uh, in terms of foreign policy, that the United States should stay out of this situation between the Ukraine and the Russian Federation. I think uh, the United States is causing the situation to get worse by uh, creating an atmosphere where it, it may look like the Ukrainians could be joining NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Uh, again, uh, the the organization, uh, if it accepts Ukraine, which in theory it should not, but if it does, uh, again, you're you're really putting NATO at risk, uh, as uh, NATO has been placed at risk by uh, accepting Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia into NATO as well. And again, these were uh, Soviet client states, very close to the to the uh, Russian Federation, the past, the Russian Empire, and and again, if if we were seeing that sort of involvement uh, along our borders, we would probably be concerned uh, as well. But again, a very very significant amount of forces uh, are uh, currently being built up within the vicinity of Ukraine. Again, uh, we've seen this time and time again, but uh, what's different now th than really in the past is the leadership inside of the United States. Uh, I would say uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, the, uh, the leadership within the uh, People's Republic of China are probably seeing a very very divided United States with a very, very weak leader who is very old and uh, is, is waning in his later stages of life and uh, probably uh, does not have the ability to make very good decisions, if he's even making decisions at this point. And then you have infighting between the hard left and the, the, the middle left, so to speak, inside of the United States who holds the reins of power. So you have doves and then you have ultra doves leading the United States with this really strange dichotomy of, of doves disguised as hawks. So it's, it's really a, a really strange moment inside of the United States right now. But uh, that could be a, a time in which uh, some of these uh, foreign near-peer adversaries may see it as a time to make a move and uh, conduct certain operations that they have wanted to conduct in the past, but because of strong American leadership that has, may have existed prior, uh, that is no longer the case. And uh, then the question is, is it an, an opportune moment? And uh, if I was Vladimir Putin, if I was uh, the uh, the leader of uh, the of the Central Committee of uh, of China, and looking at the fact that the United States is now putting cross dressing admirals into positions of power, I would have to ask questions: What in the hell is going on over there? And maybe is it a good time? to strike. And uh, again, I, again, I don't want to get into the lessons and in insanity regarding that issue uh, too much. But again, um, I hope listeners can understand what I am saying. It is not 
a good look. It is, matter of fact, it is a bizarre look uh, in terms of some of the things that are occurring right now inside of the United States. Um, in other uh, news and events, China is becoming uh, increasingly aggressive uh, towards Taiwan. And we continue to hear about buildups and positioning of forces. We continue to hear about the growth and the expansion of the, uh, the, the People's Liberation Army, the Air Force, its Navy, to a point where it may feel that it could uh, make a move against Taiwan. And again, the driving force right now is the weakness inside of the United States and the weakness of current U.S. leadership. Uh, again, very bizarre time where uh, the thought process in some of these uh, in some of these camps, especially China and Russia, is uh, is whether the United States would would act uh, if if they acted. And uh, I would have to say I'm I'm even unsure at this point. I I don't know what uh, where my country is heading nor what my country would do. Uh, if China were to make a move on Taiwan or, or uh, Russia would, would move on, on the uh, Ukraine. Now, I think they're two completely very different situations that uh, have to be looked at from, I would say, the cost-benefit equation. Uh, obviously, uh, Taiwan uh, possesses 60% uh, of microchip manufacturing capability in the world. And the loss of that would be of a significant impact uh, upon the United States, as well as other, uh, other global entities as well. Now, the Ukraine, a uh, different story. Again, uh, just up until the last 20 years, this, had, this state, this nation state, Ukraine, had been firmly in the camp of, of the Russian sphere of influence. And now... Uh, that has changed a little bit. Now, is it is it worth going to war with Russia over the Ukraine? I would have to say no, it's not. Uh, I would say that we could assist Taiwan in a manner that would prevent a Chinese invasion of Taiwan that would not cost an immense amount of lives and treasure. Uh, but with that being said, two totally different scenarios, but... Uh, Quite possibly could be one big scenario, especially when you see these alliances now forming between Russia, China, Iran, uh, Venezuela, and uh, uh, North Korea, other, other nation states. So uh, that could be a significant challenge for the, the proverbial global community, uh, which it really is not. Um, I say we're probably closer to where we were uh, pre uh, League of Nations than, uh, than where we were maybe like in 1980 or such. But again, uh, fairly significant buildup going on right now with Russian forces deploying along the border of Ukraine. Uh, we're going to continue to watch this and, and we'll, we'll keep everyone updated on what we're hearing, what we're seeing, and we will uh, continue to report. Have a good day, everybody.